A very good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very happy and excited to have the second career conversations on maximizing career guidance and career development across the globe. So today we have a wonderful guest from Canada, uh, Miss Paula, and she is the executive director of Alberta Career Development Association. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. It's wonderful to see you. Thank you, uh, Paula. Can you please briefly share your background? Um, uh, what uh, motivated you to come uh, to work in career development uh, for the audience? Thank you. Sure. So I think much like many people that work in career development, I kind of stumbled upon it. It wasn't something that I knew was even an option when I was thinking about my future and thinking about careers and work and, and jobs. Um, but I had been working with people with developmental disabilities in a job coaching capacity and had gone back to school and got my rehabilitation services diploma and um, still wasn't sure what I wanted to do with that and got a, a call from a, a former um, boss who said that her husband was hiring someone to do career development work and I probably kind of turned my head a little bit sideways and said oh what's that tell me more about it and um, ended up getting a job working in a career uh, service center, career and employment service center in a small community and um, learned everything I knew about career development kind of from the ground up, hands on working, working with people. So certainly the transferable skills that I had in terms of helping people and, you know, asking questions and, and guiding and, you know, providing, um, providing a, a listening ear uh, certainly helped to get me into that that the field and then I had the good fortune of people who supported and guided me to develop me through that and and have been learning and growing ever since in the field wonderful thank you for sharing that so at times you know happenstance theory really applies to you that you know at times things just happen for a reason and then once you once you are in that field you the, the rest is history I know um, Canada has done a lot of work on career development and you have really led a lot of projects uh, and which, are, which, which project would you like to share with the audience that you are very inspired? There was a lot of ground up uh, that, that had a lot of impact on people that you personally enjoyed. Can you share one specific project? Sure, it's one that we're working on currently that um, I'm really, really excited about and I mean certainly it's been a dream of the field for a long time, um, but working towards national certification for career development practitioners in Canada. There are a number of provinces, Alberta being one of them, that has voluntary certification for career development practitioners, but um, there's an initiative currently led by the Canadian Council, or sorry, the career... <laughs> Why do we have so many acronyms? <laughs> okay. Uh, the Canadian Career Development Foundation uh, is leading a project to pilot a national certification program, which I'm very, very excited about. I think that, you know, anytime we can elevate the profession through education, experience, you know, continuing education, I think that um, it, only, it only helps to serve our clients better. Um, when we can be better ourselves as practitioners. So I'm, I'm very much looking forward to that pilot. Um, and part of that is the um, updating of the existing Canadian standards and guidelines for career development practitioners to a competency framework, um, which I've been very, very happy to have been a part of. And many, many members of our association have also participated in that as well and, and people from all across Canada. So it's very much a, a profession driven, profession created um, competency framework. So that's pretty exciting too. Excellent, thank you for sharing that. I wish you all the best. I think it's very important to institutionalize all the efforts that we are doing in our respective domains in respective cities and countries. So I'm very excited for the, for the launch and let me know whenever it's, uh, it has started so we can share that on social media as well. I think as, as career development professionals, we tend to be quite shy when we, when we share our, our success. So one of the things I, I am, I'm doing in my humble effort is to amplify the wonderful work that you guys are doing in your own domains, in your own cities and countries. 
So going to the next um, uh, stream of questions, uh, career development promotes social justice. What's your perspective on that? I think one of the most important things that um, career development does for individuals and for families and for communities is really that sense of belonging and that sense of um, self-esteem and self-worth. And I think when people have that feeling that they're contributing, that what they're doing is important and that it matters and that it has value, then it becomes easier to advocate for other issues and challenges, all of those social justice issues as well. Um, and so I think from a kind of a, a personal development perspective, career development can help to elevate people to a place where they are uh, maybe in a better position um, to understand and, and react to or be proactive when it comes to social justice issues. And I think it also brings people together. It you know, creates that sense of community and, and community is so important when it comes to addressing challenges and issues that, that we face, um, you know, all of the social justice issues that we face and especially some of the challenges that have been brought to light really recently, um, you know, that should have been brought to light <laughs> and, and really acted on for, you know, for a long time now. Yeah. Okay, wonderful. Um, in this in this whole COVID nineteen um, uh, challenge that we are facing across the globe, and everyone has a different boat that we are actually facing this uh, pandemic. How? What types of um, strategies have you done to ensure that your services are accessible to uh, are available to people that really need it and that are vulnerable? So, can you share some insights on that as well? Talking on COVID and career development. Sure. So I know that our members um, individually and the organizations that they work for pivoted really, really quickly to be able to provide, to continue to provide services to their clients. You know, they were able to mobilize really quickly to move towards online services. Um, I think that there were opportunities because of the challenges of COVID for some people that may not have had easy access to employment, um, some of the positions, you know, became available. So they were able to, you know, to work with employers to connect them to employees. Um, certainly as an association, we just really wanted to make sure that people were connected to resources and services and that individuals that were looking for career development services knew that there were people within our organization that they could access. So we launched an open for business um, directory that we posted. So if people were looking, they could find names and websites of people that were providing those services. We started doing um, a biweekly community check-in just for our members. So it was kind of a, you know, a Zoom call every second Wednesday call in and, you know, no scheduled topic what's on your mind, what challenges are you facing, what have been some of your successes or lessons learned that you wanna share with other people. So we just really tried to keep our community connected. Um, I mean, we had to cancel our conference. We postponed our conference once and then we had to cancel it. So our members were feeling very isolated. You know, they look forward to that opportunity to connect in person. Um, so just finding ways to, to connect people and making sure that when there was information, we were sharing information, we tried really hard to be a conduit um, for information so that practitioners had the information and the resources and the tools that they needed to provide the services as best they could in, in challenging times and situations. I think that's a, that's a very holistic approach of not just having a communication but also having an engagement and focusing on their well-being and also giving them a direction of professional development of professional development of who you can contact with the with the current members that you have in your association that you are leading wonderful um, going to something very strategic uh, i know that united nations has a lot of international days they, we have the women's day the, the uh, uh, we have the children's day so why not have a career day why not have an international career day so what what are your thoughts on that yes <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> um, I think that 
you know, it's so interesting. People that are in the career development profession really get that that's so important. But I think outside of our profession, sometimes we get lumped in and under and with other things. You know, people will often say to me, oh, I have, so I know someone that works in HR, they can help me. Or, oh, I, you know, they talk about counselors, but when we say career development or career development practitioners, people, they just kind of look at us funny, like, you know, they don't know really what we're talking about or what we do or, or how we can help. And so, um, I mean, I think that, I think that having a, a day for career would certainly help to elevate the profession and the work that career development practitioners do to help people and not just individuals, but I mean, when you help an individual, you also help that individual's family and you help that individual's broader network and you help the community that that individual lives in. And, you know, certainly beyond, beyond individuals, it's employers as well. We've got such a huge connection to employers that I think sometimes people um, don't recognize or, or don't appreciate or understand the same way that we do when we're in the midst of delivering those services. So um, I think that certainly recognition for the value of career and career development um, would go a long way to, uh, to helping the profession, but ultimately helping the people that we serve every day that utilize our services. Thank you. Wonderful. I know um, you are leading a conference next year. So can you share a brief um, message to the audience as well so they can participate virtually or in person? <laughs> We're hoping to have a conference in May in Edmonton, if everything goes well. Um, May 4th and 5th in Edmonton. Um, we, we basically have kind of shuffled our conference from last May forward to, um, to this coming May. It's always a wonderful event. This will be our seventh annual conference, Alberta Career Development Conference. And um, hopefully, uh, we had Nancy, Dr. Nancy Arthur scheduled as one of our keynote speakers for last May. So hopefully she'll be able to get out of Australia and, <laughs> and to Canada next May to keynote. Um, we've got some really great sessions lined up just, you know, um, very much about being leaders in the field, very much about, you know, how we can um, elevate our profession and how we can provide really good quality supports and services to our clients. So everything's on, on the Career Development Association of Alberta website, careerdevelopment.av.ca. And um, we've got a great little um, intro video on there as well. And you can access the program as it stands currently uh, for the conference in May. Wonderful, thank you for sharing that. And last but not the least, any uh, closing thoughts, any closing uh, inspiration thoughts for people to really build on? So I had a really um, interesting experience today. I had someone tell me that I, I don't have a job, you know, um, and it really struck me that we have still a lot of work to do as career development practitioners um, to help dispel some of the myths about the world of work and what it means to work and to really help to, um, I guess, support people in understanding that there is value in all work and that all work is meaningful and that, um, I mean, career development is very much a part of that. It's not a, career development isn't about choosing, choosing the thing that you're going to do for the rest of your life, but it's about setting yourself up for success in all areas of your life and learning to be adaptable and flexible and to critically look at options that are going to be a good fit for you you know, in all of the different areas and all of the different stages of your life. And um, I think we've got a really important role and probably now more than ever, I think COVID has probably provided some really great opportunities for, for people to think about career in a different way maybe than they have before. I mean, it really turned everything upside down. People that thought that they would be going to their office to go to work for the next foreseeable, you know, future, suddenly were working in ways that they didn't know were possible. And I think businesses have shifted the way that they 
operate, um, you know, out of necessity. But I think that that's done, you know, that's done some some good things for career development too, and that it's helped people to open their eyes to new possibilities. And isn't that really what we do as career development practitioners is help people open their eyes to new possibilities and to feel even in difficult and challenging situations and times to feel hopeful and to really evaluate, you know, their skills and what's important to them and how they can contribute in meaningful ways. And I mean, I know it's been really, really difficult for a lot of people and there have been some really awful situations that people have run into, but I think it has also provided that opportunity for, for hope in a different kind of way than um, they may have ever dreamt possible. So I think, you know, in that way, it's, it's kind of exciting. Um, and I think if we, if we take a positive, um, anything positive out of this, it's that there's, there's opportunity and we just need to be, we just need to be flexible and adaptable. <laughs> I mean, Wonderful. I certainly have in my own, you know, in my own world of work, I've had to, you know, kind of shift and pivot and look at doing things a little bit differently. So it's been, it's been challenging, but good. Thank you so much, Paula, for your very inspiring messages of hope, of cultivating hope. I think it's very important. Hope is something very close to my heart as well. And I think it's very important to be very flexible in whatever job that you have or whatever role that you have. It's not to be so pigeonholed per se, that I just want to do this work, but the more you spread your wings and the more flexibility and uh, cognitive flexibility, um, that's the right word, uh, the more uh, uh, career work you will get, the more decent work you will get, and the more you will be able to have a meaningful life for your, for your loved ones. So on that note, thank you so much for sharing a wonderful insights. I know it's a bit um, uh, quite late in Canada, but it was something very uh, uh, wonderful to hear from a, from a Canadian perspective. And uh, to, for the audience, I will have a new guest from a, a different country. Uh, one of the best things that I like about career development, I've seen a lot of countries across the globe. So I'll be giving you different perspectives from all across the globe you, to ignite people that career development is here uh, for, for the greater good of, of communities, of people, of families, of loved ones, and make it a priority. On that note, stay blessed, stay connected, and stay safe. Thank you once again. Thank you, Raza.